And it's the last edition for the week. Welcome to Business Morning. I'm Ladi Williams. And I'm Ini John Makwa. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, we'll begin with global oil market updates as prices bounce back this morning from a plunge a day earlier on concerns that a large container ship that run around the Suez Canal may block the vital shipping lane for weeks squeezing supply. Prices, however, were still headed for a third consecutive weekly loss. Brent crude was higher by 43 cents at $62.38 a barrel after dropping 3.8 percent on Thursday. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude was down 49 cents at $59.05 a barrel, having tumbled 4.3 percent a day earlier. Both benchmarks were on track for a weekly loss of more than 3 percent following a more than 6 percent decline last week. And uh, back here, Nigerians may have to brace up for a new price regime of petrol as the Nigerian National uh, Petroleum Corporation says it cannot continue to bear the burden uh, placed on it by the ongoing subsidization of the cost of petrol. LNPC Group uh, Managing Director uh, Mele Kiari says the burden is overwhelming and Nigerians will sooner or later have to pay the actual cost for petrol. You take a listen. Uh, we're importing at market price and we're selling at 162 Naira per liter today. Uh, looking at the current market situation, the actual price could have been anywhere between 211 that you have mentioned and around 234 Naira to the liter. Uh, the meaning of this is that consumers are not paying for the full value of uh, the PMS that we are consuming, and therefore somebody is bearing that cost. As we speak today, the difference is being carried in the books of NNPC, and I can confirm to you that uh, NNPC is, may no longer be in position to carry that burden uh, because we cannot continue to carry it on our books. Uh, that is why uh, early last year, if you recall, uh, the full deregulation of the PMS market was announced, and we have followed this through until we got to September when prices shifted above 145. Uh, some social issues came up, with, particularly with trade unions and other um, civil societies, uh, leading to an engagement between us and organized level, uh, which prevented the eventual uh, implementation of the actual market price of the petroleum product at that time. Those engagements are continuing, and the objective of those engagements uh, those engagement is actually not to prevent the regulation, but to make sure that there is sufficient framework on ground to ensure that consumers pay for the actual price of this product and that they are not exploited. Well, anyway, in the NNPC has assured us that there won't be any increase, increase in for the month, the month of, of April. April and that there will be ample supply. Yeah, so, let's, so to discourage uh, no panic. panic buying, yeah. Yeah, because that's also, that also has its own consequences. Exactly. We, Creates a lot of traffic on the road, exactly, and then the danger, you know, queuing, yeah, you know. on the danger of stalking, exactly. you know, such uh, materials in the very houses. dangerous, very, very, very dangerous. dangerous. Well, away from that, if you're looking for a place to embrace nature and get some well-deserved resident. The Isimi Lagos Wellness and Polo City might be the best choice for you. With its confluence between technology, architecture, and nature, the Isimi Lagos City presents an opportunity to escape the Lagos norm and immerse oneself in the peace of the city. If Mother Nature had a room, it would probably be within the Isimi Lagos City. Isimi Lagos is a nature-inspired wellness and polo city in the heart of Egbe by one of Nigeria's foremost real estate development group, Landway Investment Limited. Within the city, everything is built to be eco-friendly and around the existing geological structure. This is our first commercial real estate project and this is something that we are very, very passionate and careful about. It's something that we feel that the world needs right now, most especially in Nigeria. If you walk into a similar environment, what you will see all around you is 90% nature. And that is what we want people to feel. Because you can't use your car there, you can't use uh, a generator, you can't use self-powered and is sun-powered, which is solar and all that. You can use electric cars and bicycle and all that. So, it, so a semi welcomes you back to life. The city, we thought that, you know, we've built estates. Uh, we're looking at how more can we incorporate sustainability into what we do. And um, it's just 
after COVID, you know, we, everybody as, a, as you know, a people began to look at what is most important, which is health. And we thought, what is the best way to start to reconnect people back to that, what is important, and people knowing that rest is important to them. Bringing the whole feel of Isimi Lagos to the Landway headquarters, this press conference captures the essence of Isimi in all its glory and the importance of tourism. Accessible by land, water and air, Isimi Lagos brings with it an opportunity to escape from the hustle and bustle that comes with living in Lagos. We came up with the idea because we saw a gap in the amazing other opportunities that Lagos has to offer and we thought to ourselves, okay, why not create something different, right? Something with a bit of everything, something for that you feel exclusive. Isimi. A Yoruba word that means rest or peace of mind was chosen as an ode to the experience Isimi Lagos promises. Yeah, Ine, that Isimi looks uh, really good. Looks attractive. <laughs> looks really attractive. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Plenty Waka and Uber for Bosses startup in Nigeria has announced a new investment from Techstars as it sets its sight on global expansion after a successful one year of moving over uh, 300,000 riders in Nigeria. The startup will also join nine other uh, startups in the Techstars Toronto Accelerator Program Class of 2021. Uh, Plenty Waka uh, focuses on providing comfort and convenience to uh, daily commuters using technology. And uh, Onyeka Akuma, co-founder and CEO of Plenty Waka, will tell us more about this initiative as he joins us now. Hello, great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell us about uh, Plenty Waka and what has the journey been like since uh, Plenty Waka started in September 2019? Um, We've been quite, we've been having quite a ride where uh, it's been a lot of excitement in the team. We launched um, in September 2019 to connect people from bus stops to bus stops within the city of Lagos. And um, very quickly, it grew from moving just six people in a day to moving about 1,500 people daily. Basically, what you have is a mobile app that is similar to uh, what our riders call it as Uber for, Uber for buses. When people are able to now um, order for a bus and it picks them at their bus stop, they are able to secure their seat on that bus and it takes them from that bus stop to the next. Uh, we got up to 100,000 riders within that, um, within a period of six months using the Plenty Waka solution. And we've seen a lot of growth. I mean, COVID came, it slowed down our operations slightly. But as soon as we started seeing an ease of, um, of the lockdown and people started moving across um, the city of Lagos, we started getting a lot more traction in our business. And over the last um, one year and, and six months, Lentuaka has moved about 300,000 people across cities in Lagos, Abuja, where we've expanded to, and also um, a touch in Delta State. So it's been quite a ride, um, quite excited about using technology to move people from city to city, giving them convenience, giving them security, and making them have predictable movement across places, mega cities like Lagos. So uh, uh, ju just before we talk about uh, you getting accepted into Techstars, tell us how really it works. So um, an interested person downloads your app and which bus stops, or is it just any bus stop? Do you have specific places? Just take us through that. Okay, so what happens is this. Um, right now, we, what we've done is, we started out with an in-city service that allowed you to say, if I'm going from say in Lagos, Aja to CMS, I go on the, on the app and I say, I'm going from Aja to CMS. It then shows you um, maybe five buses that are before the Aja bus stop that are heading towards your route. And you're able to pick any of the buses that is closest to you, depending on your time that you want to get on the bus. Now what happens is the bus gets to the bus stop where you've selected that you want to hop on it and then quickly it stops there and waits for you to come in. You scan your, um, using your mobile app, you would have maybe paid payment using the wallet. So you scan at the point of entry and you get into the bus, your seat is waiting for you, you're welcomed in, you sit down and it takes you from Aja all the way to CMS safely. And so when you get to CMS, you just scan and you come off the bus and your trip is completed. Now that got investors excited. And so last year, September, 
Um, we got three investors investing in Plenty Waka, Mfatu Micro Traction, and Niche Capital. But going on from there, we then got to a place where Techstars, which is maybe the largest global accelerator program, tech accelerator program in the world, um, decided to also invest in Plenty Waka and beyond investing in the platform, allowed us to give us, give us the opportunity to join the Techstars Toronto program, where it will see us expand our technology beyond the shores of Nigeria. So I'm very excited that Plenty Waka, in fact, the name Plenty Waka will be in Canada soon, where people will be able to also book for buses from city to city or from bus stop to bus stop. Very quickly also, what we did was last um, week, we noticed that there was an opportunity to also connect people from cities to cities. And so we found ourselves in a place where we could also launch um, city to city service, getting people from Lagos to um, Delta, getting people from Delta to Potakot, getting people from, I mean, across 16 different cities in Nigeria. And so those were the things that excited Texas about us. And it's having many of the founders, about three other founders, um, Johnny Enna, um, Afalabi Olusheyi, and John Shaibu. They will be going into the Texas um, Toronto program to help us launch in Canada and see other African countries that we can also replicate our model in. Okay, it'll be quite interesting seeing uh, Plenty Waka outside of uh, Nigeria. By the way, you just launched oh, yeah. uh, the interstate uh, service. How does that work? Um, so the interstate service, the way it works is Plenty Waka is now becoming um, the largest bus aggregator in Nigeria. And what that means is that um, the likes of Libra Motors, who we just announced today that we've signed up on Plenty Waka, Libra Motors is bringing on board over 300 vehicles on Plenty Waka to move people across several cities. What happens is that you would find on the Plenty Waka app that you're able to now select that I want to go from Lagos to to um, Aba, I want to go from Aba to Umuahia. I want to go from Umuahia to Oweri. I go on the Plenty Waka app and I select my destination, that my pickup point and my destination. I also select my date of travel and then I select how many people will be taking the trip. Once I start my Waka on the Plenty Waka app, it shows me several operators, Libra, Motors, many of them were looking to bring on board the likes of GUO, Chisco, Peace Mass Transit, and major bus operators across the country. It shows you the different options for you to pick which um, um, pick any of the transport operators you want to use um, to travel across um, the country. And so what that does for, for people is it gives them options now. And then also you can pick your seat, which is very exciting for most people. So you're able to pick your seat on the um, bus app and then select your seat and pay for it. Now, when you get to the park, as against struggling with people, trying to find out whether there's a bus available or not, trying to find out whether there's a seat, the way, I mean, because what our app allows you to do, it, it maps out the seats and the buses, so you can pick your preferred seating position on the bus. It allows you to do all of that. So when you get to the park, you just show your barcode that um, your ticket has been paid for, you, this is your seat, and this is the bus type. And then you get on the bus and you move across um, cities in Nigeria. So we're very excited about this. Right now, we're signing up a lot of um, bus operators. Um, we currently have a pool of about six different bus operators on the platform, but Libra being one of the biggest, which we're announcing today. And then we're bringing on GEO very soon. And we're bringing on Chisco. We're bringing on major operators. We want to have a fleet of about 2,000 buses before the end of the year, getting people across cities in Nigeria. So basically, that is what that interstate service provides for people. And we're very excited about this. What we've also done is, in order to launch that, um, on Monday, the Monday, uh, March 29th, because Easter is coming, we've decided to give people a huge discount on several routes, whether you're going from Lagos to Benin, you're going from Lagos to Abai, you're going from Lagos to Umuaya, you get tickets as low as 3,000, you can't match that anywhere else. And this is something we're doing um, in the, on, month, on Monday, March 29th, to get people to understand that now, you can get convenience predictability on your bus movement on Plenty Waka, which is building the largest bus network in the country. Yeah, because I, I was going to ask you, you're, you're partnering people who are supposed to be like your competition. So what will make you oh, no. different? What, what, what makes you different? What makes Plenty Waka different from, you know, these other guys? Because they do, some of these guys do what you are doing. So what, why should I yeah, come so to Plenty Waka? 
The thing is that we are not competitors with any of them. And that is why they're signing up on our platform. We are aggregators. So um, take, for instance, in the airline industry, you're able to get your flight on one or two airlines, but you can go on a particular website and see several airlines that gives you options to compare pricing. It gives you options to the consumer to compare pricing and get good discounts on different airlines in one place. So what Plenty Worker is, is an aggregator. We don't operate our own buses. We're helping these guys to get more customers in their buses. We're getting them technology to sell their tickets a lot more efficiently. We're getting them inventory management for those of them that don't have a platform to do this. We're getting them scalability. We're getting them branding. So these things are what these bus operators are excited about in connecting with Plenty Worker to, to, to get the technology and all of this service available for them and their customers. At the end of the day, it's a win-win scenario for both the bus operator and Plenty Worker as an aggregator. Oh, uh, what are your plans for Africa as a whole? Oh, fantastic. I mean, right now we're talking to a couple of people across the continent. We currently have some very strong conversations that are happening right now with the government of Gambia. Uh, we have conversations that are going on concerning Ghana. Um, we're looking at um, very strong stakeholders because when you're playing in the public transportation sector, you want to have regulators on your side, you want to have the government on your side, you want to have um, customers on your side. It's not just about getting buses on the road. And so we're having conversations across the continent, but we want to make sure that first at home in Nigeria, where Plenty Waka originated from, we're covering all cities in Nigeria. And once we're able to take care of that within the um, Q4 of this year, we then start implementing all of those plans into other African countries. Launching in Canada and getting us to launch in the city of Canada is something that is exciting, but we also want to do the same across Africa. So yes, um, maybe by the end of this year into um, 2022, you start hearing about plenty of work in other African markets, um, maybe starting out from Ghana, neighboring countries, um, the Gambia, and many other places where they have buses, Maybe they don't have technology. They want more customers and they want technology. Plenty Worker will be there to serve them. All right. So Plenty Worker lays a lot of emphasis on customer service, excellence, safety, convenience. How do you achieve this and make your services stand out? Um, it's constant engagement with our customers. We take feedback from our customers very seriously. And so when people call into our customer centers to lay a complaint, we make sure we act on it very quickly. We have zero tolerance for any form of um, um, misbehavior from whether it's our pilot, we call our drivers pilots. And so when our pilots are driving across the cities, if there's a complaint that is lodged against them, because the numbers of the buses are visible enough for people to see, once we get those complaints, they understand the level of discipline that we will um, enact where we're managing our pilots to make sure they behave accordingly, providing the kind of service that will represent Awesome plenty worker across board. And so we pay attention to customer feedback. We pay attention to what people say about us on social media. We pay attention to what the press says about us to make sure that continuously we have a brand that people can turn to and say, if all else fails, quality will stand with plenty worker and in how it engages its customers. We do this also with a team um, within um, plenty worker. We currently have a team of 36, I'm sorry, a team of 30. Um, that is building technology, that is building um, customers that will build our technology in-house. And so it allows us to be flexible to deal with customers' feedback in order to improve the system over time. We deal a lot with um, customer engagement. They have our phone lines. They have several ways to send feedback on the mobile app. And they have ways of rating our drivers as well, our pilots as well, um, that are working with them. Now that we're looking to aggregate other um, operators, Quality customer service is one of the things we're paying attention to as we sign the different operators we're bringing on Plenty Worker so that we can maintain the standard across board, irrespective of the bus operator working with us. All right, Mr. Akuma, what's your outlook for the sector for 2021? Um, for 2021, I think um, transportation, so with what happened in 2020 with the pandemic, transportation generally was slowed down. I think we had it come as low as 15% um, compared to what happened in 2019. Um, gradually, as markets open, as banks open, as um, schools started to open, 
as the economy starts to open, as people become a lot more comfortable with getting the COVID-19 vaccine and then get more comfortable with coming out again with face masks and then doing their day-to-day -day business, gradually we will see a growth back to roughly about 40, 45% by Q4 and maybe by 2022, 2023, Basically, by 2023, we will get back to where we were in 2019. But in 2021, I predict that the market will open up again by about 45%, seeing some growth across travel generally, not just in okay. transportation, All right. but All right, generally Mr. across. All right, Mr. Akuma, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank Mr. You. Um, Unyeka Akuma is the CEO and co-founder of Plenty Waka. Thank you so much. Well, it's Thanks. the last trading day for the week. And when we come back, we'll look at how the week has fared so far and the markets. Welcome back. Well, on Wednesday, which is just two days ago, the debt management office held the bond auction, which was oversubscribed with yields in the fixed income market remaining attractive. Despite that, the equities market has managed to retain bullish sentiment for three sessions so far this week. But how sustainable would that be to talk to us about this and more is ahead fixed income at Chapel Hill Denham, Oladipo Ajayi. Good morning, Mr. Ajayi. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, good morning. Yeah, so give us an overview of the fixed income market for the week and expectations for next week. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, in the fixed income market for this week, uh, the week started very, very slow. And um, that's now connected to the fact that uh, Monday and on Tuesday, uh, the MPC committee met. And uh, so the market was actually awaiting the response, what's going to be the outcome of the meeting. So as a result of that, we didn't see much activity on Monday and Tuesday. Um, despite the fact that, that there was a coupon payment of about 18 billion that hit the system on, the, on Tuesday, uh, but, but that does not have any effect on the market due to the expectations that market um, um, was expecting from, from the MPC meeting. And on Wednesday was the bond auction, and we saw um, how aggressive uh, the DMO went in the bond auction. Um, they offered uh, 50 billion uh, across three maturities, the 2027, 2035, and 2045. And about at the end of the um, auction, uh, we noticed that the DMO issued about 44 billion on the 2027 maturity, and they issued about 86 billion on, on the 2035 maturity and went as high as 131 billion um, on, on the 2045 maturity. And um, all these issue three instruments cleared around the the 27 cleared at 10.5, the 2035 cleared at 11.5, and um, the 2045 cleared at uh, um, 12 percent. So, as, as a result of what we saw in the auction, uh, we saw a renewed interest in the market um, yesterday. Uh, a lot of portfolio manager came into the market to cherry pick some instruments across uh, uh, maturity. We saw demand on, on the 2050 and 2049 maturity, considering that the like um, instrument, which is 2045, cleared at 12 percent. So, a lot of portfolio managers looking at market to see if they can actually get to buy around around that uh, around that level. So the market, we saw interest in the market uh, yesterday, and we expect that to also continue today. And uh, going to next week, we feel that um, we'll see more, uh, a lot of more in demands next week. And this is now connected to the fact that we are expecting over about 68 billion coming into the system next week from the coupon payment on the 2035 and 2050 maturity. And as a result of the liquidity that is coming into the system, we expect that to actually impact the market positively next week. All right, Mr. Jai, um, what is the post-bond uh, auction market reaction considering the volume issued? Yeah, we saw a lot of actions and, and we saw a lot of reaction to the bond, bond auction. It's not even about the volume issue now. A lot of people, it's about the way the instrument closed. We noticed that the long end closed around 12%. And um, considering where we are coming from, as, um, as of last year, uh, this particular instrument traded as low as 6% and um, now cleared at 12% on, on Wednesday's auction. So as a result of the high yield, a lot of, we, start see, we, we saw um, a lot of interest again in the market yesterday um, as a result of where the auction closed. In spite of this interest, we saw that the equities market ended in the green yesterday and two other sessions this week. Uh, how sustainable is this trend in both markets? 
Yeah, um, the the equity market and um, um, and and the bond and the fixed income market they are invertedly uh, related. Um, what we saw in the equity market uh, as a result of a strong performance from some from names like Dangote uh, that was released, and also the dividend that, that actually declared by some of these uh, institutions. But uh, I think that this will be short lived uh, if uh, as the yield in the fixed income market continue to go. Um, not what, and that is the expectation of us. We feel that the yield will continue to go up, and uh, as the yield continues to go up, we'll see a lot of portfolio managers divesting from the equity market to actually come into the fixed income market, uh, considering that uh, it will be very difficult at that particular point uh, for most of these um, uh, um, stocks listed on the on the equity market to match the to match the yield, considering the dividend yield that most of these. Um, um, instruments on the equity market that are currently showing out. All right, what is the impact of the on the weekly OMO bills, uh, issuances on the money market rates and the bond yields? Yeah, um, if we look at what happened in, on Tuesday, uh, um, the MPC maintained their due distance and um, uh, despite the fact that uh, there's, uh, the inflationary pressure is still there, um, but they actually ascribe the current inflationary pressure to a, a more of a structural issue than um, um, as a result of uh, the monetary policy feels that committee feels that um, adopting a monetary policy uh, tool to actually cope that uh, will further exacerbate the issue. So I think uh, on the other hand, um, we know that um, the CBN will actually adopt a more, a more of um, an orthodox uh, method to actually find a way to uh, actually ameliorate this issue. And adopting uh, orthodox method, an orthodox method, one of the ways is to continue to issue OMO. And what that will do is that it will push uh, rates up. And uh, so what CBN will, will do is that it will start the market of liquidity. And starting the market of liquidity will push rates up. And pushing rates up, we will want it one way or the other, uh, try to actually curb the current inflationary pressure. And uh, what effect do you think the newly issued Seplat Euro bond would have? Yeah, um, what the impact of this, um, the newly issued Seplat bond is that, um, the impact is that there are more instruments for people to invest in. And um, at the same time, uh, it's a very good financial decision on the part of Seplat. They've been able to actually capitalize on the current low interest environment to actually refinance uh, the existing uh, bond. Um, they had um, a three about, they had currently before uh, the new issuance, um, the 9.25% uh, Seplat 2023 bond running. And uh, the, the total capitalization is about $350 million. But so what they've done is that they issued a fresh 650 million and they called the existing um the existing uh, bond at uh, 102.31. So it was called at a premium uh, compared to uh, the par value. So we think that it's a very good uh, decision on the part of Seblat. And um, another thing they've been able to do is to refinance at a lower rate. The initial um, issuance was uh, issued at 9.25, and the new issuance is currently at uh, 7.75. So they've been able to save about 150 basis points on, on, the, on this financial decision the fx market the central bank governor maintains the bank is operating a managed exchange rate uh, policy how has that uh, played out so far on the activities in the um, ine window yeah um i think uh, one of the things that actually um aggravated the statements uh, from the finance minister was the fact that um the CBI has never has not actually um uh, intervene in the higher window throughout, um, at least for this quarter, uh, from the beginning of the year to date, they've not uh, intervened in the market. And the total trade in the market is still about 3.6 billion. And um, normally, when you operate a managed floating system, you expect the CBN to intermittently come into the market to actually um, um, pump liquidity into that market or try to mop liquidity as the need uh, be. So um, when the Minister of Finance mentioned that um, they are moving to more of like a floating rate system, a lot of people uh, actually felt that, OK, it's, that sounds OK, considering the fact that uh, we've not seen the impact of CBN in the uh, window for, for this year. However, the CBN governor came to actually um, 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 
reverse that statement that, that that's not the, uh, the line they are currently towing and that um, they are still actually maintaining the uh, managed uh, uh, floating system. And society speaking, um, normally a managed floating system, what you do is that um, when the liquidity in the system is actually cleaning out and you feel that your currency, you feel that it's actually depreciating a lot, um, the, 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 the central bank will come into the market to move liquidity into that market and actually align market with, with the expectation. So I think, um, as we speak, um, the the IN we know is not uh, fully reflecting the managed floating system. However, the CBN government maintained that uh, the high, the current uh, uh, FX regime is still a managed floating system. Now we feel that uh, if the CBN can actually work on um, tweaking the current um, FX program, it might actually find it might, they're, they're, it, it might, that will actually create liquidity in the IN window. Well, the Sibian governor still also said that uh, the inflationary pressure will regress by May. What do you think about this? Mm, the the Sibian governor actually premises um, a session on on the um, um, base year effect, and, and we think that will uh, reduce inflation. Uh, and we think that may reduce infl inflationary pressure. However, um, we also had um, what NFPC actually um, uh, said, that uh, currently the, the fair price for uh, PMS is about 211 to about 234 there. So, and um, they also complain that they, they cannot, um, uh, in a long time, hold and uh, bear the cost of these uh, excess on, on their books. So if this NFPC decide to actually push the rates on, on the cost on the on the final consumer, which are the people, we know that's also actually for that for another level of inflationary pressure. So if we look at this issue from distance, we think that, oh, um, um, the, the CBN government is very much um, dovish by um, by picking May as a, as, a, as a month where he feels that um, inflationary pressure will tame. Um, we feel that he might actually um, get uh, to the third, um, third quarter before we start seeing camp on that front, because um, uh, that will be about the time that you'll be expecting um, uh, harvest from, uh, from farmers. And at the same time, we hope by then uh, the federal government would have been able to put a, an end to the current um, security challenges that's currently uh, uh, befalling uh, farmers. Well, we certainly hope so, Mr. Jai. We look forward to uh, regressing the inflationary pressure by May, as the CBN governor has predicted. But we want to thank you so much for joining us and sharing your opinion on the program this morning. Mr. Oladipa Jai is, um, Mr. Oladipa Jai is a head fixed income, Chapel Hill, Denham, and he shared with us his experience. Well, now we're going to the markets, and uh, it's been three green days. We don't know what today would be. <laughs> Eddie, do you have a crystal ball to tell us? I wish I did, Amy. <laughs> I really wish I did. But I mean, with the three consecutive positive sessions we've seen, or rather the three positive sessions we've seen in the market, it's very likely that we would end the, uh, the week in the green. Well, hopefully, I mean, um, we've seen some gains in the market of which were driven by earnings. But like Mr. Jai said, I don't think uh, that would last so long in the market as there aren't any uh, catalysts right now driving the market apart from earnings. So earnings coming, investors react to that, and then we're back to the status quo. But we hope uh, at least we'll see some positive sentiments in the market today. But to talk more about yesterday's uh, session is Adedoin Allen, the Deputy MD at Afri Invest Securities. Good morning, Adedoin. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good morning, Adedia. Thanks for having me. Great. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk a bit about some of the heavyweights in the market. Now, Dangote Cement announced its bond issuance program yesterday. Can you tell us more about that and how are investors likely to react? Okay, yeah, thank you. Dangote Cement, right, they obtained approval of the board of directors to access 300 billion naira bonds to the capital market. The process, the proceed from this, they said, will be used to support their business growth and also to maximize available resources. Um, the proceed of the bond issue would be used for capital expenditure of the company's expansion project, short-term debt financing, as well as working capital. The investor sentiment to it might be positive, bearing in mind um, that Dangote Cement has a very good rating and a good brand presence in the market. 
it should attract a whole lot of interest. And um, also, the yield and tenor of the bond is still very unclear until they get tech approval. But I know it should be definitely priced as, as a premium to federal government bonds. Yeah. Okay, so yesterday, we saw gains from the banking sector, industrial and insurance good. But what were the major drivers in the market yesterday? And how do you think, or rather, are those sentiments still playing out in the market this morning? Yes, thanks. Like you rightly said earlier at the beginning of the session, the bullish sentiment is, um, is based on buying interest from investors as a result of positive corporate actions declared by most blue chip companies in the market. We saw Sambit and GP give their results with an impressive corporate action during the week. It also aided investor sentiment. The sentiment, after the dividend declaration, might see some price correction. But bearing in mind that we're also approaching, or would soon be approaching Q2, where we would see more results and how the sentiment will most likely pick up. So there will be some corrections, and there will be price reprising again, and then correction. All right, I did doing. Thank you for your input on the program. Have a lovely weekend ahead. You too. Thanks for having me. I did doing. Allen is the MD of Afri at Afri Invest Securities. We'll just look through the market numbers now. The All Share Index was up zero point five three percent at thirty nine thousand two hundred and ninety three point one four points. Now the month date and year to day returns have moderated to about minus one point three percent and minus two point four percent. While the XC cap is at twenty point five five eight trillion. Now, we saw lower turnover volume value and deals traded yesterday. Volume was down by about six, uh, 36%. Value was down about 34%. Uh, and all of that was traded in 4,016 uh, 4, deals. Union Bank was the most traded stock by volume yesterday, while MTN Nigeria was the most traded by value. Now, the banking sector was up. We saw gains from some of the tier one lenders, especially uh, we also saw gains from Stambik IBTC because of the earnings released. Consumer goods was down 0.24%. Industrial goods was up 0.07%. Insurance was up 0.81%. While oil and gas declined 0.05%. Now, for the industrial goods, just like Adi Doing had mentioned, we're likely to see investors react to Dangote Cement because of its bond issuance program. Now, uh, Dangote was also one of the drivers in the market this week after the, the company released its earnings with impressive dividends. So this week alone, we've seen Dangote, you know, make some moves in the market, and hopefully that continues today. The NSI was down zero, at the Onisa Securities market. The NSI was down zero point three two percent at seven hundred and twenty three point seven nine points, while the market cap was at five hundred and fourteen point four eight billion naira. We had about four hundred and one thousand nine hundred and twenty units worth 47.53 million naira traded in six deals at the bond market yesterday the market was bearish as we saw yields rise by about 40 basis points now we saw uh, yields increase at the mid short and long end of the curve and that was due to some sell-offs at the march 2027 bond uh, and the 20 the july 2045 bond uh there were 27 deals in that market worth 14.03 billion naira the Nigerian Treasury bills market was also bearish yesterday as we saw yields rise in that space. However, we didn't see much activity there. Uh, there were 10 deals altogether, worth 4.50 billion naira. We saw uh, a debit from uh, the CBN special bills yesterday, worth 750 million naira in two deals. The Omo market was also bearish yesterday as we saw yields rise in that space. We saw uh, more activity on the February 2022 uh bills we had 10 deals worth 9.611 billion naira in that counter but investors investors are you know expecting uh or rather analysts expect investors to trade cautiously in the market we've seen yields rising in the fixed income space particularly the bond market so a lot of attention will be focused in that segment of the market however for the equities market hopefully there'll be some positive catalyst you know from the macro economy uh, from the monetary side, the fiscal authorities, you know, to boost investor sentiments. But for now, what we're going to keep seeing is when something happens or maybe a company announces impressive dividends, we'll see investors react to that, to see some positive sentiment. And then it goes back uh, to the regular or rather, like Chime would say, the ding dong movement in the market. So we'll just, as always, advise, uh, advise investors to trade cautiously in fundamentally justified stocks, Ini.
Oh, thank you so much. That's the ding dong. I think we'll have more of the ding this week <laughs> than the dong. Anyway, thank you so much, Eddie. We'll, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll do an open call to London. Well, welcome back. And now for updates from London, we have Juliana. Good morning, Juliana. Good morning. Well, Annie. the government has announced plans for a £1.5 billion funding to help companies struggling with business rates following a flood of requests for support during the coronavirus pandemic. Who are the main beneficiaries now? Well, these will be uh, local uh, businesses that have been suffering over the past year. Business rates relief has been a major topic of discussion even before uh, the pandemic hit um, British shores. But since the pandemic, so over a, a year now, um, hospitality, retail and leisure centres have been able to benefit from not having to pay tens of thousands of pounds each month in business rates. This was also extended um, earlier this month by Rishi Shunak. It was due to expire at the end of April. Uh, but since... Um, um, this time, hundreds of thousands of businesses. So these are mainly small corporate businesses who are still having to pay for their retail space, but have been kind of priced out of this market. Um, they've uh, lobbied the Treasury in asking them to provide some sort of relief for them. And um, the Treasury have responded. So they've put in £1.5 billion into this pot. This will um, be assigned to local authorities to be able to designate exactly who and who will benefit. So, um, yeah, this is seen as a good story for those who have still been struggling because of the fallout of coronavirus. Yeah, but there's yet another threat to employment in the UK. Satanda is to close 111 branches across the UK and this might affect 5,000 staff. Uh, is, is this going to lead to more job losses or is there an arrangement to absorb them? Yes, Annie, there is likely uh, going to be some job losses, but according to the Communications Workers Union, they've actually come uh, to a pretty much unprecedented arrangement uh, behind the scenes with Santander to try and um, assure that most of these jobs that were going to be lost due to these 111 um, uh, branch closures uh, will be retained and they'll be shifted uh, to uh, the back end um, of um, uh, the, the corporate space. This has been a long running issue. Uh, so many of us, millions of people up and down this country are now using um, digital and online banking uh, to go through their transactions. Santander reported that last year um, their, uh, the foot floor, the foot um, measures in the store were down 50%. Uh, so it's just completely unprofitable uh, for them to keep uh, some of these uh, branches open. And yes, this is going to lead to thousands of jobs, but they're expecting that with the 452 uh, branches that will remain open that some of those positions can be changed or people will be working in corporate head offices. Hmm. But it's not good times for Deliveroo. Another top investor has revealed that it will not invest in Deliveroo at its upcoming stock market float. At this point, will this IPO ever happen? Goodness, you know, if you asked me this question last week, I would have said, of course it's going to happen. But a week on, who knows? Um, they will float. But, you know, Deliveroo are under increased uh, scrutiny. You know, this is billed as being the biggest uh, tech float in London Stock Exchange history. We've seen all these big techs like Alphabet, Apple, Tesla floating on um, the New York Stock Exchange and just how much of a feeding frenzy that was uh, for American investors. This was supposed to be uh, replicated here in the square mile and it's just not been the case and this is because of um, how Deliveroo is allegedly treating their staff, the gig economy is under so much scrutiny and I think it was even um, highlighted because of the Supreme Court battle that Uber lost uh, last week which meant that 70,000 workers in the UK are now going to be uh, deemed um, as workers and not self-employed. Now Deliveroo are consistently saying um, that their staff or their unemployed, unemployed contractors, self-employed contractors, are happy. Uh, but six of the biggest investors in the UK are pulling out because they don't think that their, um, their practice is sustainable or profitable, especially because in this fast food online uh, takeaway um, uh, sector, the profit margins are just so narrow. Um, £8.8 .8 billion is what's been expected. But who knows? I suppose when we talk about this next Next week, there's likely to be another dramatic update in there. Wow.
Not very good time is for delivery. Thank you so much, Juliana, and enjoy your weekend. Well, we'll now move to the crypto space with Laddie Williams. <laughs> well, uh, we have a, a bounce today, Bitcoin bouncing, some altcoins also uh, bouncing. The market cap, $1.66 trillion, of about 0.32%. Uh, 24-hour volume, $129.80 billion, uh, down about 19.69% this morning. Bitcoin dominance, 59.49%, down about 0.50%. Uh, Price of Bitcoin at ATM this morning, 52000 uh, $946, down about 0.03. It's up now about $53,000 at this uh, moment. 24-hour uh, volume, $60.557 billion. Let's look at price of Ethereum, $1,625, up about 1.92%. 24-hour volume, uh, $23.707 billion. So it's expected, you know, when uh, Bitcoin gives that kind of uh, big surge downwards, at some point you get a bounce, but... You don't want to catch a falling knife. Uh, BNB, top alt by market cap, down about 1.87% at $242. ADA, Cardano, uh, up about 0.37% at $1.13. Polkadot, down 1.61%. And XRP, biggest gainer here, up about 7% at $0.53 uh, cents per coin. XRP, getting some good news with uh, investors there. Uh, top five gainers, QTOM up 25.39% at $9.20. ANKR up about 12 cents. This has had a good run, 22% uh, up this morning. Flow, one of the NFTs, NFTs starting to move again, uh, $29 up 17.61%. And Rune, we have Rune up 13.37% at $5.30. Uh, 30, 30 Luna, Luna, $18.41, up about 12.3%. Uh, zero four percent. The top five losers, MVL down by seven percent. Uh, Tfwell, Tfwell, amazing run, uh, forty two cents. Tfwell, uh, this one has had a pullback uh, this morning because it's it's been moving this year. It was about two cents earlier in the year. Now trading at forty two. Uh, investors are looking at another bounce. Some are claiming it's going to hit one dollar, but who knows? It's down about five percent this morning. Harmony one down 5%. Harmony has had a good run to uh, at 17 cents. And we have Curve Dow at $2.42, down about 4.88%. Uh, and Celo, uh, $3.43, down about 4.17%. Uh, so the market is not doing too badly. We still have uh, Tesla accepting uh, Bitcoin for payment for its car. So, you know, there's still bullish news coming. There's still institutional investors actually looking to uh, put more money into uh, Bitcoin at this moment. Uh, but, you know, as I tell you, it's a very volatile market. You don't want to uh, catch a, a falling knife at this point. So uh, traders need to be cautious at the same time. But, you know, you don't, you don't also want to miss another rally by Bitcoin. <laughs> so you need to make up your mind where, and know where you want to come in exactly. and, and where you should actually give yourself some advice exactly mm. well we saw we saw bitcoin and in a couple of days i mean from about 52000 now to about 59 well talk about volatility in investments Heavy volatility. this is it's it. lost about $9000 uh, from that previous high of about 61k mm. And there are also some coins that seems attracts more Nigerians. I wonder what the attraction is. Yeah. You those, talked about uh, ADA. And, ADA, and, yeah. Cardano, uh, XRP. Nigerians love to trade those I wonder, coins. I wonder yeah. what the attraction is. <laughs> I wonder myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Laddie. And that's it for the show for this week. It's been a really nice run from Monday to date. I am Eni John McQuire. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'm Laddie Williams. Have a great weekend.